So what I'll do is just show you how to set up one of these Aqua L glossy aquariums. So the first thing we had to do is decide where the aquarium was gonna go. So there's your TV. So in proximity to the TV is really perfect because you're able to sit there and enjoy watching your fish at the same time as um, glancing to and from your TV. The other spot that we considered was over here, which would make a feature of that particular room. The disadvantage of that is the window, so that would mean a little bit more algae. Not the end of the world, but um, the other thing is that that spot there, though still a totally acceptable spot for the tank, would be a little bit harder to sit and enjoy. Whereas in this case, you've got the lounge right here, you've got the TV, so it's really the perfect situation to sit down and enjoy the um, aquarium. Whereas over here, it would definitely be a feature to that room, but it's probably a situation where you're less likely to just sit and enjoy it. So putting a bit of thought into where your tank goes is a really good idea. Hallways and entrances are a very popular place for an aquarium, but really not quite as practical because just not quite as easy to actually enjoy the aquarium. The next thing we had to decide on is the background of the tank. This particular background's got black and blue. We went with blue, obviously being a black aquarium, um, the blue's just gonna set it off a little bit more. Now the first thing we're gonna do for our aquarium is wash the gravel, and then lay a fine layer into the bottom of the tank. And you wanna make sure it's really well washed, nothing worse than starting with dirty gravel. Now the way that we wanna wash our gravel is basically like washing rice. So what we'll do is give it a good soaking and you'll be surprised how dirty gravel often is and then after we give it a good soaking what we want to do is tip off the water and we basically just keep repeating that until the water tips off clear. This gravel is actually not that bad, but we just keep running water through it, stirring it all up until the water tips off clear. Not the funnest job when it's freezing cold, but it's not too bad today. So now we've put the aquarium in position. One thing we are going to want to consider is what sort of fish are we going to set up for? Now the two most obvious choices for this aquarium would be community fish, which we often refer to at Majestic Aquariums as the cats, and cichlids. Now cichlids we often refer to as the dogs. Basically mixing cats and dogs is not ideal. So this aquarium is a three foot aquarium, which is just right on that sort of um, size where both are an option. If the tank was much bigger, I'd tend to gravitate towards the cichlids being the bigger fish, the dogs, and if the tank was smaller, I'd tend to gravitate towards the community fish, which are the cats, which are the smaller ones. So what that's what we're gonna decide right now, whether to go for cats, the smaller fish, or whether to go for the dogs. Typically, the dogs tend to get more colorful when they're older, and they tend to have a lot of personality. So this one's friends with that one, and this one hates that one, and they have very sort of strict, um, hierarchies and dominance and territoriality. So having a lot of fish is quite important with these fish because if you get cichlids or the dogs and you don't have many of them, you might find them aggressive. When you get more of them, you actually tend to find them less aggressive and they tend to get along better in a busy situation. Now, one thing to be aware of when setting up an aquarium is being realistic with your expectations. And what I mean by that is that you set the tank up, you make it look beautiful, and typically for one year you love it, one year you like it, and then you've seen it. If you find you can walk past your aquarium without looking at it, then it's really good to change. Change is king. So let's say you go for the cichlids, the dogs, then a couple of years down the track you've sort of seen them, novelty's worn off, it's good to trade them in, and then we can rehome them to someone else that's excited about them, then you could potentially change to say community fish or the cats. And the change is what keeps you interested, keeps you keen and keeps um, you looking after your fish. If you have the same fish for too long 
and you're not looking after them because the novelty's gone, it's better just to trade them in, start again and do something different and keep your interest up. Because as much as you like the idea of, hey, look, I'm gonna buy these fish and I'm gonna love them for their whole existence, unfortunately, that's not always a reality. So it's really no different to getting a DVD and you really enjoy it at the start, watch it a few times, but then eventually you've seen it. So it's better to keep your interests fresh and keep you looking after it than to let it go stale and maybe you're not gonna look after it as well as you um, did at the start. So when you find that you can walk past your tank, it's time to change. Maybe change from cats to dogs to goldfish to whatever. It's the change that keeps you interested. Now this aquarium is going to be a tropical aquarium. So therefore, what we're gonna require is a heater. Now these Aqua L Glossy Aquariums come with a Aqua L Platinum heater which is a very fancy heater. Um, it's very easy to set this heater just by pressing the little button on the top to get to your desired temperature. And when these heaters are operating, the light will flash when it is heating up. It will be solid if the temperature is at the correct temperature and um, it'll flash if it's too hot. So it's a good little heater for communicating with you to make sure that your temperature is right, but you never trust the thermostat. You always want to have a thermometer as well to make sure that your temperature is right. So the heater contains a thermostat, which sets the temperature, but you need a thermometer to check the temperature. So that's just going to go in the aquarium like this. So inside here is an impeller. So what you want to do is just every now and then you want to pull this impeller out so that all pops off and you want to give it all a clean inside. So inside here is a bunch of media. When this media is clean, it's to be cleaned in water from the fish tank, not water from the tap. Mm. And it's not a bad thing when we do send the service boy out to be here with him, because he will explain what he's doing. Because I actually enjoy doing this, believe it or not. Yeah, it'd be better than Sitting in the office is not my thing.
shape the aquarium. And because we're using synthetic rock in Texas, holy rock, we do need to be aware that it'll tend to keep the pH high. So fish like cichlids are ideal, live bearers are ideal, but we don't really want to keep anything like South American fish like tetras or discus or epistogrammas due to the rock. The rock will tend to be making the water alkaline and Sydney tap water is alkaline. So Sydney is very much, as far as pH can, is concerned, if you can't beat it, join it. Because every time you do a water change in Sydney, your pH is going to want to go up. So if you want fish that like a high pH and you have white rocks that keep the pH high, then everyone's playing the same game. If you want to keep acidic water fish like discus, in Sydney where our water is alkaline, it's a bit of a pain because you have to keep lowering your pH. And Sydney pH also has a tendency to bounce. So you get it down and then boink, bounces back up again. So having a tank with rocks that keep the water alkaline and water that's alkaline and fish that like it alkaline, then it really is easier. So when the water, generally it'll clear up pretty quickly. Yeah. Sometimes it'll get worse before it gets better. Because what happens is good bacteria starts growing in your filter. And then that will compensate for the bacteria growing in the water. And then eventually your water will be crystal. Now when you first set up aquarium, it's very normal for the water to be a little bit cloudy. It'll clear up very quickly. Once good bacteria has established in the filter, then the, the water will clear up crystal clear. Aqua L Glossy is a very convenient setup because you've got the little feeding hole here, which is very convenient. Then you've got the whole flap opens up, which is very convenient. And then this whole top basically just lifts off so access to the top of this tank is very easy and convenient. Now this tank has got a very fancy heater and see the way the heater is going up. That means that you can tell what it's set for by the top light and the fact that it's going up means it's actually heating. And the way to change the setting on this heater is you just press that little button there and then you can just press it and it'll press up or press down to correspond with the heat that you want it to be on. Right now it's on 27, which which I'm happy with. Between 25 and 27 is a good temperature. And then once you actually get the temperature right, which is your thermometer that tells you the temperature, then you can start thinking about putting fish in. Now, I've already added the water ager and the water ager is going to take the chlorine and stuff out of the water and I've added lake salt which is good for the cichlid's immune system and I've added some Malawi buffer which keeps the pH and pH right. I've added some quick start which is better to keep it in the fridge once you've opened it. Um, now we've got the test kits, which are coming nice and handy. And fish keeping is basically 50% about water quality and 50% about nutrients. 
So the food that you choose has a massive impact on the fish. Now this food here is Danichi, which is about the best food you can get. Now whenever you buy new fish, it's good not to feed them for the first two days. And then you want to feed them about what they eat in 30 seconds. So there's not one speck left after 30 seconds. And then over time, you just want to be looking at their bellies. And if you notice the bellies getting going in at all, then it means you're not feeding them enough. And if you notice the belly's getting fat, it means you're probably feeding too much. So the filter, we're gonna give that a clean once a month in water from the fish tank, not water from the tap. And the other thing that's really important is the power head. So what the power head is doing is pumping the water around and giving us very good surface agitation. Because that agitation of the surface is what's gonna give the water its oxygen. And you need a good dissolved oxygen level in order to have good redox and good redox is how well the bacteria is able to function. So in a day or so, once the temperature gets to 25 degrees, what we do is um, bring a sample of water down to the shop, a little video of the tank running, and then get your first lot of fish. So you wanna get about six fish, let them settle in for a couple of weeks, then bring another sample of water and another video, Get another six fish, let them settle in, wait another couple of weeks, chuck another six fish in. And because we're going to look at going cichlids here, you want to have nice busy fish. You want to have a nice busy active tank. If you don't have enough fish, they'll tend to hide and they'll tend to be more aggressive. So um, the other thing is you've got to watch them when they're growing up and you've got to make sure you've got a good boss. And a good boss should give everyone a bit of a chase but not hurt anyone. And if you get a bad boss, um, what he might do is knock a fish off and then he will um, eventually knock another fish off until eventually it's just him. And if you see that sort of Adolf Hitler sort of mentality going on in your tank, you need to get rid of Adolf because it's important you have a good boss in your tank. And a good boss should give everyone a chase but not hurt anyone. And once again, if you're worried about anything, then pop down and see us here at Majestic Aquariums and we can um, help you out, bring a little sample of water and a little video of your tank running. It's all good fun. And if you're too busy to service a tank, we can always send our boys out and do it for you, obviously, assuming you're in Sydney. Now, with an aquarium, some people like to see the surface of the water because it looks very alive. Other people like to fill it up so you can't see the surface of the water. And that tends to look a bit more pastel, a bit more like a pitcher, and a bit quieter. So if you like that busy, active look, then having good surface agitation and featuring the water surface is something you could do. Or if you like that very quiet, still look, if you fill it up a little bit more, then you won't get that flickering as much and it won't look quite as alive. I prefer to see the surface but some people don't. So with an aquarium like this, you basically wanna have the lights on when you're likely to be enjoying the fish. If you're out or you're asleep, it's best to have the lights off. And if you are getting a bit too much algae, cutting off your light is going to reduce your algae. Also, if you are getting algae, it's good to get some extra catfish. Things like Plecostomus are actually excellent at cleaning your algae. Now, on our YouTube channel, you can watch the DVDs because they're all available on YouTube now. So this is your instructional cichlid aquarium guide by me, Paul Talbot. There's also your instructional tropical aquarium guide your instructional reef aquarium guide, your instructional marine aquarium guide, and your instructional first aquarium pond guide. So on Majestic Aquariums TV, this YouTube channel, you can have a watch of this DVD or any of the other DVDs you might be interested in. And it's a really good start, middle and end education to um, make sure that you know how to manage a beautiful fish tank like this.